All right, what is going on everybody? It's Mr. Uzi here with another screen recording video of a semi-new operating system. Today we are on the HTC One M7 from AT&T and we are overviewing Android Lollipop. So currently it is not out for the HTC One M7. Uh, HTC was not able to meet their 90 day deadline and push out the operating system to all of their older devices, but I got a little impatient, decided to root my phone, unlock the bootloader and download this specific ROM, which is Maximus HD version 52, running on Sense 6, Android version 5.02. So this, this video is all about some of the features that you can find in Android Lollipop, kind of my opinions, and a little bit about performance and battery life on an older device. So starting, since we're already in settings, we have a search bar now. If there's that one feature or that one setting you just don't remember what tab it's underneath, you can go ahead and just search for it. So for example, we're going to use Smart Lock, which is a new feature in Android Lollipop that lets trusted Bluetooth devices re not require a pin to unlock the phones when they're within proximity. So if we go into Smart, say I didn't know what tab it was, well there you go, there's Smart Lock. Open that up and it's under security, now I know. From there, I can go ahead and enable and disable to my heart's content, and that works for pretty much any setting as long as you know the name of it. Moving on, we have the notification bar, which has had a bit of a facelift. You can still see what's happening behind the screen uh, while you're in the notification bar, and if we swipe down once more, we have the quick settings toggles, which by are pretty much the same. They're a little bit lighter, they have a gray background instead of black. And again, you can still kind of see an outline of what's going on behind the screen. And if you wanted to, you could swipe down or just tap the top and that'll also bring you down into the quick settings. One more feature we have is in multitasking. So in multitasking, we have all of this accordion style design, all of these tabs and different apps that we have open, yes, scroll through. And one thing that you might notice is that some of these actually just look like individual web pages. And that's because Google Chrome has decided to make individual tabs their own window in multitasking. So you can't really go into Google Chrome and have the tab count up in the top right hand corner, but instead you have to go into multitasking in order to switch. Still not a huge fan of it, but that's the way that they made it in this version of Android. And I can close whichever tab that I want to just by swiping to the left or right and press and or pressing the top right hand X button there. And finally, the biggest feature of Android Lollipop is material design. If you haven't noticed, all the animations come from somewhere. Either they swipe up, left, bottom, top, expand, compress. That is the bread and butter of Android Lollipop and there's no exception. A lot of apps use it. There are some that don't. Um, but they're few and far between at this point because Lollipop has been out for quite a bit of time and a lot of developers have been optimizing it for this specific material design aspect. Now let's get into performance and battery life. Overall performance I have to say is good but I do notice that when I'm starting an app or you know just doing a general task the animation has a little bit of a delay before it actually goes and I have to say I'm not 100% mad at that because I'd rather have an animation stop or delay a little bit before it starts than have it be choppy especially with material design smooth animations are what make this operating system look amazing uh, on the battery life you can see that I'm sitting at about 25% right now it hasn't been that much of a heavy day um, but ooh, could I come into work at 10 tomorrow Eesh. Anyway, <laughs> let's see. So you can look at the screen on time it is two hours and 48 minutes, which is pretty good. So I can probably squeeze three hours, maybe three and a half hours, depending on how I use it. Um, but overall time it has been on has been around 14 hours. You can see it's been a steady decline. One thing to know about my battery life though, is that I tend to turn GPS and mobile data off, uh, mainly because Mobile data is not necessary when I'm within Wi-Fi 99% of the time, so it's kind of redundant. Um, but yeah, battery life has been pretty good. Standby time is amazing. And I have to say that it has pretty much improved on everything KitKat has done uh, to a greater extent. I'm glad that HTC or even Google has allowed uh, this phone to be updated, uh, even though the update hasn't been released yet. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed seeing another screen recording from me, I know it has been a quite a long time since then, hit the thumbs up button. If you do or are interested in rooting and unlocking the bootloader on your HTC device, I'll leave a description down below on what guide to follow. It will be the guide that I specifically followed. So, and it worked for me, as you can see. So it may work for you, but your mileage may vary depending on your certain device. 
Anyway, thanks for watching. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down button. And I will see you guys in the next video.